first of all, just baseball history, first and foremost, Wrigley Field. You know, it's Wrigley, it's Fenway Park. Like, those are the two most iconic stadiums. Um, So to be able to call Wrigley your home, to be able to call Wrigley Field your – your you know your your job your 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 office whatever you want to call it was was it's an amazing thing just you know the neighborhood and the way the fans embrace the team um just the you know the crowd has a good time uh our record wasn't exactly what we want to have it and we want to we want to improve off of that but the fans still show support you know they're they're still selling out the games in august and september and Man. we're not going to the playoffs that year so um that just goes to show you what kind of environment you're getting to play for yeah 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 yeah, yeah. welcome to me casa make yourself at home do your do welcome to my pad this show lab go create your move this episode is brought to you by subway what's good everybody it's 99 miles per hour podcast with me your host percy garner and if you're new here i want to say thank you we talk about sports life and everything in between on this channel and uh, if you're enjoying the content make sure you like and subscribe and share it with someone you know Uh, That would be greatly appreciated. Now, I feel like there's been a big break in here. (laughs) I'm going to blame it on Josh. But, uh, (laughs) but no, um, you know, I I dropped the ball, you know, on a couple of my guests that I have on here. But today we got a special guest, and uh, it's a a former teammate of mine. Uh, But before we get to um, uh, the guest that we have on the show today, I just want to touch on a few things. I'm kind of getting into some new things here, and we're going to have someone on the show in the future, too, talking about NFTs, and if you just vomit in your mouth, don't worry, you'll learn about it. <laughs> I'm a, we're going to bring someone on who can explain it to us, because I know it's all weird and stuff, but uh, we appreciate you guys who all, who all subscribed, and we appreciate Peterman Plumbing and Subway for making this podcast possible, and uh, also have a Discord. If you guys want to get in the Discord and learn pitching from someone who didn't play in the big leagues that long, then you're joining my Discord, baby. <laughs> Maybe we can get my guest in there to uh, give some tips that I don't know uh, since he had Hall of Famers uh, as his dad and uncle. So, all right. Hopefully, I didn't give my guest away there. Let's get into the introduction. Uh, so, someone I have on the podcast today, I haven't talked to in kind of like a while. And then I was like, you know what? Um, I don't know if he hit me up or I hit him up. One of the two happened. I was like, oh, snap. I got to get him on the podcast. So uh, he agreed to come on. But this dude is uh, currently a pitcher for the Chicago Cubs. I won't hold that against him uh, since, you know, they did uh, prevent me from getting a World Series ring. But uh, this dude's a warrior, uh, one of the most competitive dudes I've ever met. And uh, I will be honest, I, I underestimated this dude when he first uh, came to the Phillies. Um, but now we know what, what type of guy this dude is. And without further ado, Mark Leiter. How we doing, Mark? I'm doing good, man. Thanks for having me on. Man, it's, it's good to have you on the show. Um, I'm not sure if you've done many of these podcasts or whatever. You know, this one's super laid back. Um, the fact that I mentioned that I underestimated you, I probably shouldn't even said that, but <laughs> I just know once I met you, like obviously we, we clicked, you know, on and off the field immediately, but just watching you pitch, I always loved your mechanics. I loved the way you threw the ball. Um, and you know, that's something you don't really go, Hey man, I love the way you throw, but you know, now I'm, I'm yeah. going to tell you, you know, since I'm a, a civilian and you're still playing uh, major league baseball, um, <laughs> I just wanted to get that off my chest. Obviously you got a lot of things going on for you. You know, you know, you're the father, you know, the family, everything's good. Um, and you know, it looks like you're, you got a little, uh, you know, you're a dog person, which we'll get into. Um, but I just want to mm-hmm. ask, you know, how, how, like, how are things going? you know, at this point in your career, just how are things going with all the stuff you've been through? They're going right now. They're going very well. You know, uh, I appreciate everything you just said, honestly. Um, you know, I, I was a low round pick, so, you know, the expectations were never going to be high. I was never going to be looked at as a guy that, you know, that guy is definitely going to be there at the end. You know how it goes coming through and you look around and then, as year as the year goes on, you kind of start to gain respect for certain, you know, the way the guy goes about it or whatever. 
and uh, trying to learn from everyone. I mean, your situation was very unique when I got to play with you. Um, so, like, you were kind of like a veteran guy that, like, you had experienced a lot of stuff that, uh, you know, the guys that I was comfortable with that I had come up with a little more uh, hadn't experienced yet. So, like, me just kind of growing up in a baseball family, like, I have always valued learning from guys that have the experience that, you know, I'm hoping to obtain on my own. So, you know, that naturally gravitated me towards learning from you as much as I could. And then also just your personality is one of a kind and <laughs> an absolute blast to be around. So uh, made it easy for us to hit it off, I thought. But um, yeah, I mean, as far as how things are going, that that is a long time ago now. And uh, there's been a few bumps in the road and couple things of adversity on the way but at the same time uh i wouldn't have it any other way than than kind of where i'm at right now so it all it all leads you to where you get you know so yeah. all it's all part of the journey and i actually believe you uh, and if <laughs> just to describe the way you know once we dive into what you went through he describes it as a few bumps in the road it's kind of hilarious but um <laughs> uh but it's all perspective and um like i said you're a warrior and competitor so that that is kind of how you would interpret it. Um, I did see a comment on one of your posts from Harold uh, saying that you still can't get through halftime against him in Madden. So I don't know what he's talking about. Do you even have time for games? You know, you're a you're a father now. Oh, and yeah. You still got to. OK, good, good, good. Because, you know, we might have yeah, to yeah. we might have to link up. But yeah, we'll link back up. All right. Awesome. Um, the only one that can do even FIFA here and there. Wait, what'd you just say? I said I was the only one that could hang with you oh, here okay, and there okay, with FIFA. Okay. I thought you said beat me and FIFA. But anyways, uh, <laughs> I'm playing. I'm old and washed now, so it's all good. Um, but uh, but how has family time been? Obviously, um, you got married, what, how long ago? 20. Okay, because I feel like you've been married a minute. Um, yeah, seven, we just had our seventh year anniversary. That's what's up. Congratulations. Congratulations. Um just you know being you know obviously your wife's gotta be cut from a different cloth to kind of put up with this baseball career and i mean you've had that experience um you know i don't know if, how much you want to go into it but uh, later we'll talk about you know obviously your dad and uncle and then you got a cousin in the league now too so you know we'll get into why baseball um and was it always on your plan from the beginning but you know, let's let's talk about the wife and, and, and the new baby. I mean, how how is that? Like, uh, is it something that you're you feel like you're playing for a different purpose now? Or is it just like a, another motivator? It's not that you need one because you like you just love the, to play baseball. But uh, I know how for me, it kind of affected me a little bit, made me want to, you know, just, you know, go after just a little bit harder. Um uh, but for, for you, from your perspective, I mean, what's, what's it like and how is, you know, how, how, how has Megan been as a wife? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've been very fortunate. Anyone that has gotten a chance to be around us is, knows that I'm very fortunate with my situation. And my wife is a, um, is a blessing and she has allowed, uh, she, you know, she's made it, she's made it easy for me to, to concentrate on strictly baseball and, uh, you know, kind of taking care of the distractions and making sure that my mind stayed clear. Because as you know, like, you know, this can be a mental grind just as much as a, you know, physical thing. So um, our spouses can take care of as much of the stuff that can pull you away headspace wise from what you need to be focusing on. And I've been fortunate. She's, she's, uh, she's, she's great with all of that kind of stuff. Um, you know, just, just kind of, partner in the whole thing you know yeah. um and then as far as uh having having madison our baby um our daughter who just turned just turned one um Dang, okay you know it, it, i would say like kind of to your point like i don't know that it necessarily made me feel any different as far as everything uh maybe just because of like kind of being a later round draft pick and um just kind of feeling like back against the wall always um i kind of carry that chip on my shoulder maybe so i think if anything it kind of helped me out off the field um maybe gave me a distraction uh to just enjoy like my my time away from the field and not maybe think about baseball all the time 
um, as much as I do love that and I love baseball and I, I love so much of it. Uh, sometimes I think that having the baby now gives you a nice perspective at home to just enjoy your family time. And, um, on that side of it, it definitely gave new purpose and, um, yeah, it's been it's been an absolute blessing from God that everything that has gone on with uh, with having the baby and everything. So it's been great. And like from from someone like like yourself, and obviously you've talked about having the chip on your shoulder and and being a later round draft pick. I've always admired people who just competed because obviously you touched on my <clears throat> my situation, I guess, and I've always kind of had that. Um, I felt like I always had something kind of holding me back mentally. And um, I always admired about you, how you were just out there and you were, you know, from, from, from my vantage point, it just looked like you were always free and just not really thinking about, you know, Hey, you know, I got to have my arm here. You were just, you know, fine tuned and ready to compete. And you were, you know, actually playing baseball for me. I feel like sometimes I was just a little out there, like, not even realizing there's a hitter in the box. <laughs> and uh, you touched on it a little bit about the mental game. Now, did you did you get to work with um, Hannah with the Phillies? Was she there when you were there? This is kind of a spirit of the moment thing. I'm just like, oh, because I, I wanted to get her on the podcast, but I wanted to see if you worked with her at all or got to experience her. She was the um, uh, the mental performance coach. I think she's with the Rangers now. but um, Or Jack. Did you work with Jack? <laughs> Uh, Jack, yeah, I had, I had some good conversations with Jack. Um, as you said, we'll go into it with, with this stuff with my family. Um, that's something that, uh, the mental side of the game is something that is so important. Um, but because, uh, for my love of baseball, just in general, like the way that I got to grow up with my dad, having 11 years, big league experience, 20 years, professional experience, um, you know, just kind of almost treating me like a teammate at a lot of it. And, uh, you know, my dad wasn't somebody that was going to push me and like, you know, say you have to make it, you have to do this because his, his feeling was always that he already made it. So like, it was, you know, he doesn't need to live vicariously through me. He's already got to experience it, but he also knew how great it was. So like to give me whatever I needed to, to help me on my path. But, um, as I've always said, the the big advantage that I, I did have was growing up with that kind of experience, that kind of knowledge. And then obviously my uncle, uh, 16 major league years, and then my uncle Kurt as well played double A. Um, so being able to lean on uh, just, just different mentors and different um, perspectives on different aspects of the minor leagues and different things. Um, the craziest part about it is like, you know, like the longer you play, the more you forget about early on. So like, as I was going through the early minors, um, my dad was remembering stories from, you know, early in the minors, which is so much longer than the, his big league years um, time ago and things he hadn't thought about in years, but something would happen at the field and, and I'd go home and give him a call and all of a sudden he'd be telling me about a story that happened in 1984 or this or that. And, <laughs> you know, very, just how the game doesn't really change. So how like my advantage, what it really was, was being able to go home with the same thoughts that say you were going home with. Um, and I was able to get like some sort of closure or some sort of answer to the, to the puzzle that like, you know, you don't really know until you've experienced it. And to, to be able to lean on his experience really helped me with the mental side. So when I did get to the field, you know, the goal was to just compete and to put the work in, on the side to, to, to be comfortable with the mechanics, to be comfortable with the game plan that once you get out there, it's just compete, no excuses, whatever you got, you got to have your best, you know, com, uh, put your best competing aspect that you can out on the field and worry about the rest tomorrow. True. So True. I was fortunate to have that throughout. Yeah, man. Where was that? You know, you could have sent me some information that after you talked to your dad a little bit, you know, to help me out. No, I'm messing with you. But uh, um, I'm sure I did. I'm sure I did a little bit, at least. <laughs> yeah, you you definitely, you know, when you saw me like, dang, man, because the thing I always tell people is, you know, obviously I could throw hard and I always people always told me the talent was there. I just, you know, always would, you know, kind of be obsessed with certain things that would kind of take me out of the, the competitive part. But the thing I remember, I think the first time I saw you pitch 
was in Clearwater against Dunedin. And, you know, I knew nothing. I just knew that you, you know, your dad was a big leaguer, your uncle was a big leaguer, and that, you know, we were cool and we could talk and whatever. But when I saw you first pitch against Dunedin, which was funny because eventually I think you went and played for the uh, Blue Jays, um, I was just like, dang, Mark is nasty, man. And and it just, it made me like look at you from a different vantage point and, and the confidence, because I talk about confidence a lot on my show as well. And, you know, I, I envy people with confidence and where, where do you think you kind of got your confidence from? Like, cause you don't, you're not just born with a chip on your shoulder. Do you think it was just, uh, something that you adopted because, cause I'm assuming you were probably good in little league and in high school. And I think you had like 20 some strikeouts in college out of, and we got to talk about the college you went to in a second too, but <laughs> I love technology, but, uh, you know, I might get on you a little bit, but, um, where, where do you think your confidence came from? I don't know. I mean, I think it's a, uh, it's a tough question. Honestly, I think it's just a matter of just loving the game and just putting your best foot forward and kind of thriving off of like success. Um, just, just the will to not want to, to get beat. And I think that some of it maybe comes across as confidence. And I think some of it is just like, just the fear of failing, like, I just don't want to fail ever. And I want to have as much, uh, like, I just want to chase the success. So like, I don't know, try to try to immediately get addicted to this, to the feeling of success and, and just keep grabbing hold of it. And, um, you know, obviously being confident in the work you put in that, that kind of gets you to that point that you can execute what you're trying to execute. And then I think just the, put in the expectation for what you're capable of. And when you show yourself that you can do something, you know, a few times that becomes the standard. And then anything less than that is just like, I know I'm better than this. And I know I can do better than what I'm doing today on this moment, on this pitch. Um, I've been a guy that'll get a hard time from teammates throughout because I'll throw a one ball in, in, in that bat and kind of like get on myself and everyone's like, you know, <laughs> so one, one fastball away. And it's just like, yeah, but like that pitch just cost me what I wanted to do in the attack plan of this at bat mm -hmm. and a mechanical, you know, miscue kind of pulled me out of it. And that's something that I, you know, I feel as though I could have controlled and could have corrected. So it's just like staying in that locked in focus of like, I know where my level of expectation is regardless of anybody else's expectations. And I'm just trying to strive to, to go grab that. I like that. I like that. Um, now not the next thing I want to kind of talk about is the, the journey that we've alluded to earlier where, you know, you were out of the, you made it up to the big leagues with the Phillies. And then, um, and then obviously with, you went through Tommy John and you were out of the big leagues and, and now you're back. Just talk about how hard that was because for me, I never made it back after 2016 and 2017, you know, I got hurt. Nothing serious like a, a Tommy John or UCL, but uh, it was just little nagging injuries that, you know, kind of hindered me and actually, you know, made my, my mental stuff worse because, you know, it was stuff throwing and, and it was a lot of annoying stuff, but, um, I think the story about, you know, and the reason I called you a warrior in the int introduction is is based on this, because anyone that can, you know, go through Tommy John, and I feel like today people think, oh, Tommy John just makes you throw harder, but like, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff that goes, you know, behind the scenes, a lot of the, you know, people just see you with like a little cool looking bionic arm, and then they just assume nine months later, you're throwing five mile an hour faster. <laughs> That's just not how it goes. <laughs> So uh, just talk about, you know, getting to the big leagues with the Phillies and and then, you know, kind of your journey back. OK, um, whew, this is a deep one for me. Um, <laughs> OK, uh, absolutely. Like uh, so just just in general, like I hate, you know, I guess what doesn't kill us makes us stronger. And that's really the way you got to look at it, because. I was, I was so fortunate to have had a, uh, you know, you don't want to go through injuries, but I had a shoulder uh, surgery with the, with the Phillies. Um, and their rehab 
program is second to none. Uh, the the work that they the, – just the work ethic throughout the rehab program, um, it matched my personality for wanting to do more because that's the only thing I knew. Um, and then just going back to uh, – back to the the blessing I had of having someone like my father to lean into and be able to talk through the process who he's had six uh, rotator cuff surgeries throughout his career. And um, my dad was out of baseball for three years in his career. Uh, um, and all of the different aspects that he went through um, definitely helped to guide me when I had my adversity with injuries and um, just the ability to understand the rehab program that I, that I learned in Philly with, with my shoulder um, and just the mindset that you have to put yourself into. And at that time, you know, I really wasn't, uh, I had no backing. I still was a, you know, I was not on the prospect list or anything like that. And I still had to prove myself. Um, Fortunately, I was coming off my best season so that bought me a little bit of wiggle room. Well, let uh, me just interrupt always- you real quick. Let me just start because he says, say that was your best season, but I don't know how many years you led the Phillies minor leagues and strikeouts. <laughs> but I know, like you, you're a perfectionist, so you might have had more. I just know every year Mark Leiter leads the Phillies <laughs> in strikeouts. But sorry to interrupt, but I just had to say that. Go ahead. <laughs> I, I, I appreciate that. I really do because I would have liked to get one of those pitcher of the years that they give out there and they never <laughs> picked me. So it is what it is. But um, I, I think it was three years in a row, if I'm not mistaken. I, yeah, I, I, so. I think, but yeah. I'm not 100 percent sure because I never, I never got any kind of recognition for that. But I really do appreciate that. Um, <laughs> I'm giving you to you now. <laughs> yeah, I know. I I appreciate it. Um, that that year though, that was uh, like I I I was basically like behind Nola. So like uh-huh. Nola, when he got called up to AAA, I got called up to Double A, and like. I was going to be starting the All Star game for for High A that year. Like I had a, I had a really good year and a really really good, uh, just a good run. And uh, at the end of the season, my last game before the playoffs, I felt something in my shoulder and then had to get shoulder surgery. Um, fortunately for me, like the, the 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 surgery was absolutely great. Doctor Morgan did a fantastic job. And then uh, the rehab with Joe Roush and who's now with, with the Phillies in the major leagues, um, just in, you know, every day put in my best foot forward and like ended up throwing harder off of a shoulder surgery and um, which is rare. And I uh, actually thought the shoulder surgery was easier than Tommy John, as you alluded to how yeah. Tommy John maybe is an easy recovery. I did not think so. <laughs> um but uh, yeah, like just learning the the process that that took, um, and then getting my opportunity to pitch in the big leagues a year later or whatever it was. Uh, the next year was 2016. I was in Double A the whole season, and then the following year, I was in uh, in the big leagues in, in the middle of April, um, which is a crazy story in its own right because um, I wasn't invited to major league camp, and I wasn't protected on the 40 man roster in my Rule Five year. And um, I was the first pitcher called up to the big leagues that year from the minor leagues. So that's crazy. Um, that really changed a lot of mental aspect of everything for me, like my thinking, because, you know, you worry about different aspects of what you're being recognized for, or what you're, you know, what you're seeing, what you're feeling, you know, whether you're getting invited to big league camp or not. And all the worrying we do as <laughs> as uh, athletes and um, to see that, like, I worried and I was very upset. I didn't get invited to big league camp, and yet it didn't make a difference even a little bit. Uh, that really changed my perspective on a lot of things in baseball. And um, it, it kind of guided me to help me with where I'm at now because the next level adversity was, was a lot. But <laughs> – um, <laughs> Well, getting, I'll let you, I'll let daily you daily breathe daily. though before you before you get into elbow surgery, just because I want the 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 people to understand. Because for me, I wasn't protected in the Rule Five draft either. I didn't get invited to the big league camp at all either. But I also didn't perform the way you did, and <clears throat> that's that's kind of rare for for someone to not be in a big league invite and not be on the forty man roster to get called up. So you forced their hand. And I've seen a couple people do that in my career, 
and it's it's kind of it's all it's really hard to over to overcome because a lot of people they're they're used to politics and high school sports um and maybe some in college but you you think at the professional level that that goes out the door but it, it's very it, it worked in my favor because i was a high draft pick i probably would have never have made it to the big leagues if i got you know uh drafted later in the draft so you had to overcome a lot of things and and you just kept pitching and just kept pitching well and uh you know, that, that is one of the most things I recognized about, you know, uh, about your career before I got, you know, before my baseball career was over, I was just like, you know, this dude, man. And, and I didn't even know what you were going to go through down the road, of course. But, um, it sounds like you, you've learned a lot and it's obviously benefited you, um, to go through this next chapter, which we're going to talk about. And, and that's Tommy John. So I've never, I've had feelings where I'm like, oh crap, am, am I gonna, is my elbow messed up? Am I gonna need Tommy John? Like, was it like an instant, like, oh, yep, I tore it? Or wh- I know you said you got misdiagnosed. So, how was that experience? Whew. It was uh, one of the toughest things I've ever really gone through because um, coming off of 2017, I, I had some ups and downs, some, you know, some, um, some signs of really like, big time success and then some signs of big failure. And I just went into that off season expecting to like learn from the bad and just, you know, embrace the good and find a way to, to like be more consistent. That was really, you know, as all of us need to learn in this game is to find a way to be consistent. Um, so like going into 2018 season, I was excited. I was really ready to go. And like, uh, I was having a fantastic spring and, um, the final the final game that I pitched in the spring, I felt something warming up, but like, you know, like you said, you feel things all the time. You didn't know what it was gonna be. And then uh just kind of just tightened up and then I did like it was kind of the first time I got hit in spring. So it's like, well I'm not gonna say I'm hurt because I gave up a few <laughs> runs, you know, like yeah. I don't know. I don't know how to say it. I no, don't that's know true. That's true. Say. That's true. The, the next inning I kind of went back out and I still was kind of off, but like, I think I punched out three in the inning and gave up three. So it was like, am I just making bad pitches or, or is something off? And, um, you know, it just was one of those things where it just kind of gradually got worse as the inning went on or the, the, I pitched three innings that day or whatever it was. And it was really just like afterwards I had this throbbing and I just went to the trainers, showed them what, what the deal was got an MRI, got, got on the, um, I was on the IL for the first, first month of the first month of the season and, um, tried to like rehab it back and, and just kind of get through it and see how it went. And it kind of just stayed the same It never got worse, never really got better. Um, some days I felt good and it seemingly, it felt like I pitched well those days. And then the days where it kind of was achier and those were the days where it's harder to throw strikes. And looking back at it, it makes more sense now. But when you're going through it as a competitor and as an athlete, like you just, you, you try, once you're on the field, there's no excuse. You know, if you, if you can't get out there, you should have said it before you put yourself out there. So, um, you know, it's just something to learn from in the end. And uh, the next year when I got to Tommy John, it was, uh, it was almost a relief. To be honest, um, I, I ended up feeling kind of a similar thing warming up in the bullpen of 2019 spring training. And uh, basically, I understood at this point, like, I'm not going to try and push through this again. I saw that my statistics told every everyone the story that, like, I certainly am not good enough to pitch injured. So um, I made the decision to, you know, be adamant that I knew something was wrong and kind of learning from the mistake of the year before and uh getting the surgery and it was a relief it was a lot of weight off my shoulders that like okay like now we know what the problem is and now we're going to get it fixed and we're going to be better for it and um you know the rehab i'll just i'll just like summarize really quick the the reason i say the rehab for tommy john is so much harder and then people want to give it credit is because you typically feel pretty good it's just a matter of like taking the process like very slow and like allowing it time to heal. Whereas with the shoulder, your shoulder was achy, your shoulder hurt, even trying to stretch it back out. So like you knew you had to push through things and like kind of like get over barriers in different ways. With Tommy John, you felt pretty good the whole time, I thought. And it was just a matter of like 
like timing everything up properly. Um, and it's just such a long process of a year, year and a half um, that, that it's just a much more difficult for my mind, for my process, the way I work. Um, it was, it was a more difficult uh, rehab. I thought. That, that's interesting perspective. Um, Cause obviously I've never had surgery. You know, I was uh, blessed to hurt other parts of my body, but um, <laughs> I still can throw right now. I'm a solid 75 on the radar gun, but uh, <laughs> Um, yeah, that's, that's definitely interesting. And I think it, it's good to share that part of, of what rehab for your experience was. And, you know, it'd be interesting to compare that to, cause obviously a lot of people have that now. Um, but it's, it's, it's great. What team were you on when you were you with the Diamondbacks? So I was with the Blue Jays and then, um, 2019, rehab with the blue jays and that was a free agent at the end of the year which threw a big wrench in everything as mm. well because then you're going home as a free agent trying to rehab i signed on with um with the diamondbacks to go to major league spring training and finish my rehab up with them i was really doing what i wanted to be doing velocity was coming back uh throwing live BPs. I had one more live BP the day of uh, the national emergency of COVID. And uh, when they sent us all home, that got canceled. So I was one live BP away from being cleared for games. And uh, we all got sent home. And then, Dang. I don't know, they released like 13, 13, a month and a half or so later, they released like eight. They were the first ones to release the most guys or whatever it was like they released almost, I don't know, 75% of the non-roster guys, I guess. Dang. Um, it was, it was a purge of the non-roster guys basically. Um, and I happened to be on that list. And then it was just a matter of going home and trying to basically have a season on my own pitching at a high school and facing local high school and college kids that were home and just every five or six days going out and throwing three to five innings and trying to simulate, uh, trying to simulate game experience to get my arm back healthy. And I had a really nice support group and guys that were committed to wanting to get better too. And it really helped me and made me learn a lot about myself in the time as well. That's awesome, man. Um, yeah, I was going to ask if COVID helped you, but clearly <laughs> it, it did not, <laughs> but I mean, making, making timing. something good. Yeah. It was, it was, it was weird timing since you're about to be cleared. I, but. I, I will say this though, as far as that, I felt like there was a dip at some point with my rehab. And, um, I think the timing of COVID, like, I don't think I might, I might not have had the dip had I been on a team the whole, whole time, but because I had the dip, I am appreciative of the fact that my comeback was when I had a full, like they say two years is when you're really healthy. So as tough as it was, it would have been a lot worse to get signed on at the end of the summer after like being on my own the whole summer and like, you know, get three innings and see what happens. Like yeah. I got to have a full year in 2021, which wound up being the best case scenario. It, it was hard to understand in the moment, but looking back at it, it worked out. So I can't, I can't say it didn't help me in some, some way. That's what stood up. Now, now you're with the Cubs, you know, the enemies and now I'm playing. <laughs> How was it pitching at Wrigley, man? I, I never got to play there. Uh, I got to play against the white Sox. Not, I didn't get to play at Wrigley. Okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, Wrigley is, uh, it's one of a kind. It really is. Um, just a, just a, first of all, just baseball history. First and foremost, Wrigley Field. You know, it's Wrigley, it's Fenway Park. Like, those are the two mo most iconic stadiums. Um, so to be able to call Wrigley your home, to be able to call Wrigley Field your, your, you know, your your job, your 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 office, whatever you want to call it, was was it's an amazing thing. Just you know, the neighborhood and the way the fans embrace the team. Um, just the you know, the crowd has a good time. Uh, our record wasn't exactly what we want to have it and we want to we want to improve off of that but the fans still show support you know they're they're still selling out the games in august and september and Man. we're not going to the playoffs that year so um that just goes to show you what kind of environment you're getting to play for um 
And it's appreciated. I mean, you really appreciate it when you go on the road, especially in late August or September, and there's some teams that are out of it, and, you and you know, there's just not a lot of fans there. And then we go home, and we're sold out. It's an it's a, it's a amazing atmosphere to play in. And that's a big deal because when I made my debut, we were on the cusp of going to the playoffs in Cleveland, and everyone was still hungover from the Cavs winning their championship. So I like I'm walk, I'm running out of the bullpen, and I'm just like, dang. There was only 11,000 people there, and you know, the stadium holds like 40. So I was like, dang. <laughs> in minor league stadiums, 11,000 is packed. <laughs> but in the stadium, it holds 40. Yeah. You're like, oh, yeah. But, um, yeah. but no, man, you know, obviously – I asked you some of those questions just so, you know, maybe there's some kid watching that can learn from that and know that, hey, it's possible to to come back or, you know, not to get down if you're not, you know, a high draft pick or whatever. Now, um, you know, be- before we wrap this up, you know, because I didn't get to really I, I kind of want to mention that it's cool. Did you even know that you're the second father son duo for the Phillies? Did you or did you think you were the first or what? Uh, no, I know the Amaros were the first ones. Um, oh yeah, yeah, true. The Amaros, yeah. We were the first. We were the first as far as pitching. So uh, that's that's, I know. that's pretty cool. But I mean, kind of cool. Ruben Amaros, the one that that was the GM when dra- when I got drafted. He was also teammates with my dad. They were good friends. Oh, that's and, cool. And um, yeah, and uh, it worked out. Um, they were at the game that you mentioned, the twenty strikeout game. That's the game the Phillies came to see me. So that uh. really helped me. Oh, yeah, and what was your college? Yeah. New Jersey Technology School Institute? <laughs> NJIT, New Jersey Institute of Technology. And there was somebody yeah. drafted out of there before you. Like, is this some baseball powerhouse that's just under the radar or what? <laughs> no, I mean. How'd uh, you end up there? How'd you end up going there? We went, basically, it was uh, I wasn't throwing 90 plus miles per hour in high school. And um, my dad believed it was a good idea to go somewhere where I was going to pitch as a freshman. And. Oh. Uh, Go go somewhere where you weren't going to sit. You're not going to get better from sitting. Um, and I went to NJIT. I got 80 innings as a freshman, took my lumps, got better, learned from it, and uh, got to put, you know, 300 and something, 380-something innings, I guess it was, uh, over four years and learned how to get better. And, uh, you know, I'm proud of the way that we started that program. And um, they were like three or four years into D1 at the time. And kind of at the bottom of D1 and uh, by the end of our time we were a 500 team and you know this past year or so they went to the tournament for the first time so um, you know I'm, I'm proud of kind of like being a part of the start of that and the group of guys I went to school with are friends for life so it ended up working out and uh, you know I'm proud to be the first major leaguer from there. That's what's up man and the one thing I really wanted to to kind of highlight is what you said it says, obviously, you went there to, to play so you can get better. But you said you went there and you took your lumps. You know, a lot of kids, you know, if they're, you know, f- feeling like, okay, I should, you know, be here and, you know, do well or, or you know, they might get discouraged. But, you know, obviously, we can tell, which I've been talking about this whole show, is your your, your mentality and stuff is is um, is second to none. And uh, But before I get out of here, I just want to ask you a couple <clears throat> quick questions you know um i'm not sure you know your your cousin is that jack your cousin is he who whose father is he or who's his father al's son oh okay 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 now so he's al's son and then my other cousin cam is at ucf uh who's kurt's son kurt's son okay dang man that's just crazy after a couple years too that is crazy are you close with jack or no yeah, I mean we got we get together and we get to we get to talk baseball together and all that kind of stuff. He's a lot younger than me, so like I was in pro ball when he's kind of going through some of this stuff. But um, you know, especially as we get older, we're gonna for sure be close and be able to help each other and uh, learn from each other. It's gonna be it's gonna be exciting times in the next few years. That's what's up. And you know, we talked about your competitiveness, and you know, I want to poke at you a little bit. But does he throw harder than you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he throws a little harder than me for sure. <laughs> I'm messing with you. He was uh, obviously a high to, highly touted draft pick. Was out drafted out of high school, but then didn't take it and ended up being, what, second overall or something like that? Was he that high? Yeah, second overall. That's crazy. Yep. Um, But just goes to show, you know, Mark Leiter staring me in the face, and he's still playing, 
and uh, I was drafted second round. He was drafted twenty second round. So, right? Did I get that right? So you got that right. Let's see, so don't get discouraged, kids. But anyways, fast questions before we get out of here. Ah, um, what's your favorite sport outside of baseball? Football. Oh, okay. Uh, how far can you hit a driver? What, how far what? What did you say before that? Philadelphia Eagles. Oh, how far can you hit a driver? E. Uh, <laughs> two eighty, maybe max. I okay, okay, okay. Uh, okay, I like it. Maybe we'll have to go some time because uh, you know you're right. in my, you're in my zone. Then I thought you would be someone that was. Yeah. <laughs> um, who is the best athlete you've ever seen play in person or perform? Oof. Oh man, Roman Quinn maybe? I don't know. Really? I mean, that guy is the fastest guy I've ever seen in my <laughs> life and the, the, the twitchiest athlete that I've ever seen. That is true. Any sport, any sport now, all the sports. Who's the best athlete? Oh, just like the best athlete in Or any just the sport best the I... the best person you've ever seen perform any sport. <laughs> <laughs> that is a really tough question. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you saw Tiger, uh, right? Who else have you seen pitch or play football? You know, play. I mean, basketball. I got to see a lot of cool sports. I got to see a lot of athletes up close growing up. And I mean, I got you to did? meet Ken Griffey Jr. as a kid. So I'm oh, thinking, God. I mean, all right. Yeah, I, I didn't know that. And you, you don't want to get on anybody's bad side, you know? <laughs> no, no. I mean, that was the coolest experience I've ever had. So I'm going to go with Ken Griffey Jr. as the best athlete. Dang, that's awesome. Um, best African-American pitcher that you've ever had as a teammate. <laughs> <laughs> I got to say Marcus Stroman. What the? I mean, oh, damn. <laughs> I mean. Mm. All right. If you didn't have any kids or any responsibilities, what purchase would you make if money was no option? Um, that's, I don't know. That's not something that, that doesn't really, that's not for me. I don't know. Uh, I don't have an answer. Okay. I got you. All right. Last one. Chick-fil-A or Canes? Oof. Uh, Canes. Let's go. What about you, Josh? What would you pick? Chick-fil-A. Oh, get out of here. That's why you ain't got a camera on you. No, <laughs> no, nah, man. But I, I, I appreciate you coming on the show. I am obviously I want to have fun with you a little bit because you know it's been a minute since we've clowned. But um, I just want to let you know, man. Uh, I admire what you're doing. Keep going. I'm gonna be watching you. You know, I got MOB TV, so I can watch every throw you make. So don't make any mistakes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, say what's up to Megan. Not sure if she remembers me, but. Um, and uh yeah man i i really hope uh for the best i'll be praying for you during the season and uh hit me up if you want to lose in any video game you you choose um <laughs> but no thanks thanks for coming i uh, appreciate having you here and uh yeah um thanks for having me on. oh for sure for sure anytime we might have to have you back because you know there were some things that you know i i didn't get to touch on All but right. But anyways, uh, we appreciate everybody who tunes in. The show will be live Tuesday. We'll see you the, the following Tuesday, hopefully. Uh, we plan on having Josh Harrison, uh, who's with the White Sox now. Um, and like I said, we'll have someone talking about NFTs to fill us in because I, I don't know what that is. Um, <laughs> but uh, exciting stuff going on. Um, make sure you like and subscribe. Again, thanks to Peterman Plumbing and Subway uh, for making this podcast possible. And... Um, Make sure you go to my website, percygarner.com, uh, for some merch that will allow a student in Tuscarawas County uh, help them pay for books or whatever they need in college. So go there, percygarner.com, buy some merch. Um, it's on my Instagram and Twitter page now, so no excuses. Um, and yeah, follow me on all my socials. And uh, like and subscribe. Oh, did I say like and subscribe? Thank you. Okay. Uh, but without further ado, we'll see you next time. Peace.